Hey everyone, Ken here with Ken's Creations. Well, I'm excited to finally be able to show you a sneak peek of the new Cricut Design Space app coming in January of 2015. Now this app will be able to be used on all iPad version two and later. Now, you might ask yourself, what's the difference between the new Design Space app and the current Cricut Make It Now project app? The current Cricut Make It Now project app gave you access to the Make It Now projects. You were able to customize a little bit and then cut them using your Bluetooth wireless adapter on the Cricut Explorer. However, it didn't give you much custom ability or starting new projects or picking up an edited project. That is where the new Cricut Design Space app comes into play. Now, one of the first questions I'm going to go ahead and answer for a lot of people is, do you need the wireless Bluetooth adapter to use the new Design Space app? And the answer is no. You can still use the Design Space app you can start new projects, you can save projects, you can edit existing projects and then save it to the cloud, go back to your desktop and cut it on your Explorer. You only need the wireless Bluetooth adapter if you're going to cut straight from your iPad to your Cricut Explorer. Now, if you've never set up your wireless Bluetooth adapter, it's super simple. You're just gonna go into settings. You're gonna make sure you are on your Bluetooth menu and then you're gonna make sure it is turned on and highlighted green. Once you see under my devices, Cricut, you're going to select that. Now, if it wants to pair it, that's fine. You're gonna go ahead and pair it with your uh, iPad and it's gonna ask for a pin number, which is 0000. And that's it, you've paired it. So now that we have taken a look at the differences between the apps and how to set the Bluetooth, let's go and take a look at the new Design Space app. All right, let's go ahead and launch the new Cricut Design Space app, which is this white one with the green head. Now you're going to see the welcome page come up, and this looks a lot like Design Space currently. You have all of your Make It Now projects. You have a start new project from scratch. You have your little Cricut head guy up here that has a getting started guide that shows you everything on how to set up the app, the projects, how to move your images around, the different edit capabilities, and how to set up your Bluetooth connection. You also have your ability to log in and out of the program, the terms and condition, and what version of the app you're running. Now you see these three little lines. These three little lines, if you select it, is where you're going to get your saved projects. So you can actually hit my projects. That will bring up all of your saved items you've been working with. And now you'd be able to easily bring these into session and start redesigning or go ahead and start cutting it. You also have all of these categories. These categories are the different Make It Now projects based on what type of Make It Now project it is. You have home decor all the way down to one of my favorite, which is the free. Now that we've taken a look at the welcome page, let's go ahead and start a new project. So let's go ahead and start with a new project. You're just going to hit your blue plus sign there. This is going to bring up design space, which we have a lot of stuff to cover, but let's start with images in the lower left hand here. This is going to bring up all of the images in the libraries. And first thing that I love right off the bat is just by pinching your fingers together, you can zoom out your images to get a ton more images, which I love. The next thing I want to show you is just by hitting the little eye symbol in that image, this will bring up what image set it's on. It will also bring up all of the images on that set. So if you're looking for a coordinating saying or a certain image to coordinate with that, it makes it easy. To get rid of that, you're gonna see that create a critter two right there. We're gonna click that X to get rid of that and that goes back to your previous screen. Up here, you have categories, which will bring up all of your different categories, whether they be animals, cards, celebrations. You have your cartridges. Now your cartridges are gonna bring up all of your cartridges. They're going to let you know if they've been purchased or if you need to purchase them. Now keep in mind, through the app, you're not going to be able to purchase complete cartridges or image sets. However, you're going to be able to purchase single images by go ahead and designing with it. And when you hit go, you'll complete your purchase through the Apple App Store, just like you would in any certain app, you'd be able to do that. Now the other thing is you have a search function up here. So we can search bear, and that's going to bring up all of the bear images. It's also going to bring up any tag lines that you've set. So as you can see, I have some SVGs in here because I used the tag word bear. So it brought those up, which I love. Now you also have this filter over here. This filter is where you're going to go 
to find out what library things are part of. Right now we're showing everything in libraries, but if I go to Cricut libraries, that's going to bring up items just on the Cricut libraries. So that's going to bring up all of your Cricut images, whether they are purchased, subscribed, or you need to purchase them. You also have a subscribed, which is going to bring up your subscribed images if you're part of the subscription plan. This will also bring up any of your images you've uploaded because technically that is part of the subscription plan. You also have purchased, which will bring up your purchased images, whether they be a cartridge you purchased or single image sets. And then you have uploaded, and this is going to be your uploaded images that you've uploaded to Design Space. Now keep in mind, at this time, we're not able to upload images in the app, but we can still upload them on our desktop, and as soon as you upload them, they will be saved to the cloud and instantly available in the app. Now one other thing I wanted to show is this does have the ability to design with your print and cut images. However, at this time, you're not able to do print and cut right from the app. You're gonna be able to design everything and save it to the cloud, and then from desktop, you'll be able to use the print and cut then. All right, so now that we've taken a look at all of the images and what's on this screen, let's go ahead and pick a few images and insert them into Design Space. So let's go ahead and take three images and bring them in. I'm gonna bring in this penguin, I'm gonna bring in this lion, and then I'm also going to bring in a card. And I'll show you why in just a second, but I wanna have a card or tag available for this uh, demonstration as well. So all I did is search card in the search engine and it brings up anything with that tagline. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one and insert all three images and watch how fast this loads. Just like that, it loads in design space. Isn't that amazing? So let's take a look at all of the actions in the bottom here. You have actions, edit, sync, layers, undo, and redo. Actions is where you go to actually do any actions of a specific item. So on this penguin here, we can group him, ungroup him, attach and detach, weld and slice, flatten and unflatten, arrange your layers from front to back, duplicate, and then if you have text, you can isolate your text. Once again, keep in mind, just because we have flatten and unflatten, that just means we can go ahead and get an image ready for print and cut. However, we're still gonna need to save that image and do that on our desktop version. Now this is where it gets fun. You can ungroup an item and it seamlessly ungroups it and then all you have to do is select that one item and just with your finger on your iPad, move around and it easily moves everything around. Then if you didn't like that, just hit undo. Let's say I wanna regroup him. I just draw a virtual box around that penguin. It selects everything and hits group. Easy as that. Same thing works for detach, weld, slice. All you have to do is by using your fingers Draw boxes, move things around just like you would with a normal iPad. I love it. Now, you also have edit, and this is where you can go to resize an item. You can flip things horizontally or vertically, or you can change the position where it is on the mat. Now, you can do this one of two ways. Of course, on my penguin here, you see I have some options around this box. In the upper left-hand corner, I have the delete button that deletes your image. I also have the unlock option. So this is going to unlock your image so this way it will not keep the ratio. And see what happens in the lower right hand corner when it's locked, it basically lets me know I can only resize my image going without one direction. But as soon as I unlock it, it turns green and lets me know that there is no restrictions. Now I also have the rotate in the upper right hand corner. And what you're going to do is hold on to that rotate and while pressing down on your screen, you're gonna be able to rotate your image however you want. Now, you can't just tap that. It won't just rotate by tapping it. You actually have to hold down that little and then rotate it. You also have your sync features. So this is easy to sync different colors. You're just going to be using those three little squares. I always call them a little hamburger. While holding that down, I just seamlessly bring it down to what color I want it to be and it syncs it right with that color. So just where those three little lines are, it highlights it and then you move it up and it changes it to that color. As simple as that. That's why I love this. You also have layers. This is where you go to actually change all of your layers from what you want it to do. So you have your cutting, writing, scoring, or print. You have an undo option and a redo button. So obviously if I want to make, I made a mistake, let's say I went ahead and deleted it and I said, oh, I didn't want that, I can undo it or redo it. 
So those are some quick features. Now, text is super easy. If you hit text, it's going to bring up your text box. Let's say I want to type Ken's creations. I hit my keyboard out of the way, and now I just zoom back in by kind of zooming in on my stuff there, just by pinching my fingers, select that font, hit the edit key, and right here where it says Cursive 101 and there's a little arrow, I push that, and that's where all my fonts are. Now you won't be able to search for fonts, but it's broken it down for you by all fonts, system fonts, Cricut fonts. And it will also tell you under the font if it has a writing style, if it's single layer, multiple layer, and if you need to purchase it or not. So I love, love this feature. So let's say I just want to change it to a Frightful Fair. I click out of there just by clicking outside of that box. That's when I can go to Actions and isolate my letters and then I can independently move. Now, don't you hate it when you move your letters and you now, if you ever want to line it back up, it's a hassle. Well, not anymore. And the reason why is there's this new feature under settings right here in the lower right hand corner that has smart guides. And I have mine turned on. And as you see here, when I start moving stuff, you're going to see this yellow line pop up. And that is letting you know if something's lined up. So as you can see there, as soon as I moved it, it's letting you know that that R is lined up perfectly right there. So this is a awesome new feature. I love this feature because now I can easily align things center to the right, to the left. It's awesome. So as you can see there, look how seamlessly those little yellow lines pop up to let you know everything is lined up. So this is a very welcomed addition in my opinion, something that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Let's go and get rid of that text and let me show you another line feature. Let's say you're making this card and you wanna make sure the penguin is centered in that card. So first of all, let's go ahead and group this penguin by drawing a box around him and hitting group and that's gonna group him. And now when I move and resize this penguin, I'm just gonna resize him by hitting that little blue circle there and when I move him into here, look at that. It lets you know if he's centered. As soon as you're not centered, that orange line disappears. But as soon as you hit center, boom, that lets you know he's centered perfectly in that card. Then I can move that blue layer behind him, make it bigger, and then once again, I can center him. Look how great that is. I love the alignment tools. All right, so that is a quick overview of the edit tools, your action tools, how to add text, the new alignment tools, the fact that, oh, by the way, we have metrics now. So if you want to use metrics, you can. So that's pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and um, get rid of these two guys and get my line here. And let's show you what it's going to look like when you actually send this to the mat and what cool features are there. So when we're ready to go and send this to the mat, very simple. All you're going to do is send it to the mat. Now from here, you have some options. You can obviously switch through the different uh, mats that you have. So yellow, pink, black. You can change material size if you want to. You also can turn your mirror radio dial on if you want to mirror an image to get it ready for heat, band, heat transfer vinyl. One of the new features that I love is if you hit this edit button, those little sandwich things appear again and it gives you the ability to move around your mats. So if you want to cut a mat first, you can do that. You also have the ability to swipe through your mats just by touching one of the mats and going from left to right. So all very cool features. When you're ready to go, you just hit go. Now at this time, if you had purchased or needed to purchase a single image, this is when the Apple App Store would kick in and it would say, do you want to authorize a purchase of 99 cents to Cricut and you would hit yes and you would do it seamlessly through the Apple Store. If it's free, as you can see, it just brings up your first mat. It's gonna tell you what your radio dial is set on and you can still switch through your different mats, which is awesome. I love it. So that's the cool features on the new mat preview. So let's go ahead and go back to the main screen here into our design. And I want to talk about some differences between the website design space and the app. 
So let's go ahead and answer some questions I know a lot of you already have and kind of clear up what's different between the website and the app. First of all, this Design Space app will be available in the App Store by the end of January. It's going to be for iPad 2 or newer, and that does include the iPad mini. You will be able to download this for Apple devices, but at this time, not for Android platform. So what's new in the app compared to Design Space on your computer? Well, on this one here, you have the ability to select mats without having to page. You have the edit order of mats, so you're able to switch the edit that your mats you have the swipe and scroll between mats, you have the snap guides, and you have you designing while you can be cutting in the background. So you could be cutting something on your machine and go back to designing in Design Space. So now this is a companion to the software that you currently use. So this is not a new software and there is no charge for this. This will be a free app in the App Store. So you'll be able to use both together. So now if you're currently already using the Make It Now app, when the Design Space app becomes available, you'll be easily able to just update that app and this will, will replace the Make It Now app because at that point we won't need that Make It Now app. If you have the Bluetooth wireless adapter, you will be able to cut straight from your iPad to your Cricut Explorer and that I walked you through in the beginning of this video. All right, everyone, I hope that gives you some answers to some questions I had and also gives you a first preview look at the new Design Space app. I'm really excited about it. I think Cricut did a tremendous job designing this app and how great it works and how seamlessly it works. Make sure you guys subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'm gonna be releasing a lot more on the Cricut Design Space app and a lot more videos on how to use it. Make sure you're checking out my blog over at www.creativeken.com. Make sure you're checking out all of my different pages on the internet. Make sure to check me out on Twitter. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Oh, and don't forget, I do sell Close to My Heart product, which works great with the Cricut Explorer. So if you haven't checked out my Close to My Heart website, check it out. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching this amazing new app demonstration. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, and I hope you go out there and make something magical. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Have an amazing day.